Welcome back to Hackwood. So in this video, we're going to solve the lead code problem, find minimum and rotated sorted array. We use an efficient approach with the binary search. So we'll break down it step by step, explain the intuition and cover the time and space complexities. Let's dive in and track this together. So personally, I face this in my interviews. So let's dive into this one. So the given question is, suppose an array of length n sorted in ascending order is rotated between 1 and n times. For example, the array, this is the given array, some uh, like nums they have given like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is now sorted, right? So this is now, they rotated it, it four times. So how did they rotate it? So here they uh, mentioned that they're doing in a clockwise direction. So basically, if this array is rotated one time, it means that uh, the last element would come to first element. So that's what uh, they mentioned here. So let, let's see this in action. So they mentioned they did the clockwise rotation here. So the last element would go to the first now. Similarly, if you rotate this one time, uh, this would become like a uh, last element would go to here. Same for this last to here and same for this last to here. So this is what they given here, guys. So when this rotated four times, it becomes this one. So basically when we rotate this seven times, we'll get the original array back. So that means that it is already sorted. And then what they mentioned, given the sorted array nums of unique elements, return the minimum element of this array. So basically guys, we need to find that minimum element of this sorted array. And then you must write an algorithm that runs in over log and time. So guys, when they ask you an in interview, it's not that you have to do that min and give this. So it's definitely that you have to show your bunny search skills here. I personally face this in my interviews. So I'll explain you in the way that you won't ever forget this approach. Okay. So firstly, uh, we saw this, right? So basically if you rotate this one time, this is just like a clockwise rotation. We get the loss array element as a first. Okay. So, and then it's the same examples they followed here. So it was, uh, this is some rotated array. So we have this pivot point where like uh, we are jumping from the high value to lower value. So the graph would be going like this. Okay. We had to find that pivot point in the binary search. That's very simple process I'll explain, but let's go over the examples. So this was rotated over three times. We don't care how much time it's rotated. We just want the minimum element. So minimum element here is one. We return one. And then here, same, the minimum element is zero. So we return zero. So guys, this is a special case. See, this 11, 13, 15, 17 is in sorted order. That means that it is rotated either for zero times or four times. Basically, we saw here, right? So if we rotate this given array to the number of length times, it means that like we'll get the same array back. So this is the base case we need to check. So if last element is greater than the first element, then it means that array is in sorted order. We don't need to do any operation. So our like we don't need to chain our machine like to finding the binary search and all. So it's just like a base case we have to check. So we just return it. That's all. So here also they explain the same. The original array was this one and it was rotated four times. That's all. So what are the constraints? So n is equal to nums length. So they uh, define the nums length as n and then n is in the enclosure range of 1 to 5000. And here nums of 5 means that the elements in the nums are in the enclosure range of minus 5000 to 5000. Next thing is all integers of nums are unique. So basically it says that like there are no duplicates. And then lastly, we have nums is in sorted and rotated from one to n times. So it's not that zero rotation. They always do some rotation. So it could be rotated from one to n times. That's the constraints given. So guys, the basic thing is we have to find that pivot point. So pivot point is where we see the dip in graph. Let's say we draw the graph like this. So here what we get. So here uh, like four, five, six, seven. So the graph would be rising and then suddenly drop to zero, zero, one, two. So this dip. We want to like, this is the way the pivot point and this is the pivot point we have to search for in our binary search. You got it, right? So basically here, what are the steps required to solve this? So firstly, you have to initialize the two pointers. This two pointers because like you have to keep track of our uh, left and right. Like uh, basically you need to shrink the window, right? In binary search for that, uh, we keep track of the two pointers. Left is a uh, like start of the array and right is at the end of the array. So start of the array in the sense, like uh, we, we would keep it as a zero and the right is at length of array minus one. So here array name is nums. So basically length of nums minus one. And then next case, we need to check if the array is already in sorted. Uh, so when can we say that array is already sorted? So when the last element is greater than the first element, this means that array is in sorted case. That's the third example here, guys. So here uh, we have it sorted. So that's why we just return slightly like nums of love because it's in sorted array and then that would be the minimum element. So next step is to perform the binary search. So we don't have the array sorted. That's why we have to perform the binary search. So you know the basis of the binary search, right? Let's say binary search is just for finding the target in a rotated sorted array. So for the target, we split the array into like, we have these two pointers in array left and right. And then uh, we say we have a middle pointer. So basically we derive the mid using the left and right. We do the left plus right by two. 
that's an integer division so if the target is greater than mid it means that it will lie in this range of mid to right left somewhere like we get mid and then somewhere we get right array sorted that means that like it would be in this area only so we search this area so if the target is less than a mid then we search in, in this area only so we shrink our boundaries so let's say our target is greater than the mid then we have to search in this space only for that thing we change our left to mid plus one and then right remains same so if our target lies in this range that means that we need to search in this space so then uh, we keep our right to mid those are basics of binary search guys so here it is not a straightforward binary search by the way because like we have the array sorted but it is rotated and we would be having some dip here that dip is our minimum element so you know right this is the case where like we had a dip we just discussed this so you'll be remembering this i know and then here the same step remains here like mid is close to left plus right by two guys and then next step what we're doing we just uh, checking if the mid is greater than the right this means that minimum is the right up how can i confidently say this when you take this example this is our mid so this is the uh, array which is ordered for six times and this is our mid so this mid is greater than the right so in this case our minimum element exists in where right half that's why we have to move our left to mid plus one basically we need to string our window right to this uh, particular right half that's what we need doing this so we're moving left to mid plus one then we find the mid in the between this left uh, updated left and right okay in other case if nums of mid is less than or equal to light this means that minimum is in the left half or mid so basically there could be a possibility that the mid itself is a minimum so that's why uh, we have to move the right to mid so how can we definitely say that so we have this array if it is rotated for one time we have this like mid element as two so this two is less than or equal to six that means like we have our minimum element here only right so we see here so in that case we have to shrink our right to this mid so we have to search in only this location so effectively we reduce our search space to half right that's what the binary search is we reduce our search space to half every time it would be off log n because like n by 2 n by 2 we keep doing and then it would be reduced half each time so it's off log n this part you understood then after that we just need to return the minimum guys it's simple so we just translated the same steps into code you see right you, we have the left and right defined these are the extremes of the array so basically this is the left is at the zero index and right is at the maximum valid index in step two we're checking if the array is already sorted this is the case where if the array is rotated for the length number of times so we saw that right if we rotate this array to the length number of times that is here the length of the array is seven and we rotate for seven times we have the array as sorted only like initial array only that is the case so in this case like uh, how can we check this case so basically if the rightmost element is greater than the leftmost element that means that array is sorted and we can return this as a minimum element so that's what we're doing it so if nums of left is less than nums of right we just return the nums of left and then here third case like we have to do binary search because we don't find our minimum element here as a first element so in that case we have to search our array using the binary search so we keep that doing it until left plus and right so we find the mid using this form is pretty simple right we just divide it by two and it's same as a standard binary search and then after this we discussed right we just need to check if the nums of mid is greater than the nums of right and then if that is the case we move the left to mid plus one otherwise the minimum is in the left half including mid so we make right to point to mid so after that we just keep on iterating until this left plus and right once this is condition breaks we just exit the loop and then we can directly return our nums of left because left would be pointing to the mid right so what is the time complexity guys it's log n we, we discussed right why it's log n basically the search space is reduced to half each time uh, effectively making it a log n space complexity is off one because we don't use any other array or set or something hash map so basically we just iterating using this uh, pointers we have so it's off one i got the code ready let me try running it so yeah it's accepted let me try submitting this cool now it's accepted for all the test cases so congrats guys you just learned this hope you never forget this approach i personally faced this in my interview i already told you so yeah you there's a chance that you might also get in an interview that interview is for, for some product based company so keep in mind that like this is very one of the important questions or this is a standard variation of the binary search and that's your wrap on solving this problem using binary search if you found this video helpful drop a comment below and share your thoughts don't forget to like the video spread the word to your fellow coders and hit that subscribe button for more in-depth coding tutorials if you would like to get the latest update, then follow our Instagram handle. It's mentioned in the description below. See you in the next one.